Hi, my name is Carrie Lynn Paul, and I am the Indigenous faculty uh, here at Cody, and I also lead the Indigenous Women and Community Leadership Program. I think the ideal candidate for this program is really somebody who's active in their community. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're elected. Uh, it's that you're really trying to make positive change in your community, however you see that and however you define your community. Uh, it doesn't. It's, it doesn't matter that, if it, that it's a geographical community. It's really about who do you spend time with and how do you create other leaders um, among Indigenous people. Sometimes that's an urban setting. Sometimes that's within a Métis community or an Inuit community. Uh, and sometimes it is in a First Nation community. But we're open to all different kinds of communities and all different kinds of leaders. And if you see yourself or your family or your friends or your community describes you as somebody who's responsible and accountable and, you know, leads lots of different meetings or um, just puts their time in their community and really is trying to create positive change, those are the kind of people we love to see in our program. And not somebody who maybe has taken every, uh, had, a, had a lot of educational experiences, but really wants more tools to be able to affect change in their community. That's the kind of women that we're looking for. Ideally, you would bring a project idea when you come uh, that you, so maybe it's something you're working on, it's a passion project. Maybe while you're here and you, you gain these new tools around community development, you will have other ideas about what you want to do, but having a sense of how you want to make an impact in your community, what kind of groups you want to work with, uh, age ranges, genders, uh, topic area, those would all be helpful in, in uh, coming to the program and being able to be effective. Part of, the, part of being a participant in this program is really collaborating with other women across the country. So there's such diversity in Indigenous women and we actively try to use the skills that are in the room. We also take a we also take a approach that honors indigenous ways of knowing, being and learning, but we also look also to non-indigenous ways of knowing, being and learning. So we try to have that two-eyed seeing approach and that's really important for the women that come here that they understand that that that's how we do it and and there's benefits from, from accessing both of those parts. So this year, the program is a two week long program. You'll start with an orientation before you come to campus. You'll spend two weeks on campus with us where we'll do a lot of learning in the classroom. We'll also do some learning in community. We'll have uh, one or two field trips. And out of that, you have the opportunity to choose if you would like to do a community project and that will last for three months and it is followed by mentorship and accompaniment by staff. Another thing that we look for when choosing participants for this program is that we want to know what you'll do with what you learned in the program and how you'll use that to impact change in your community once you get back. How will you create other leaders? How will you share what you know? Uh, we focus a lot on um, an indigenous focused asset based community driven development approach, which is very long. We call it IABCD. It's really giving you tools to engage with your community. What we'd love to see in participants is that you come with an openness and willingness to share. We have a huge diversity of Indigenous women from across the country, north, south, east, west, and we also have a huge diversity in experience, in opportunities they've had before they've come, and cultural knowledge. We are trying not just to give you tools to be better leaders in your community, but also to create a community of Indigenous women through this program. And how can those relationships go on beyond this? How can you, can you collaborate and support each other beyond just this program? So after this program, we hope that you will take the knowledge that you've learned, the tool buildings or the skills to build community 
go back and do your projects in your community or do your ongoing work or volunteer work in the community and that what comes out of that is healthier, happy communities. And for me, the goal has always been um, a thousand flowers blooming and to see that those are the participants in the program who go back and create more leaders and create healthy happy communities and have other people come up as leaders and those are the blooming flowers and so to have thousands of flowers blooming across the country uh, has always been my own personal goal to to really uplift and and see women really lift each other up and lift their communities up and I think that's our that's our ultimate goal. There's already so much wisdom in your communities. Really oftentimes it's just recognizing what are those gifts, what are those talents, how do we bring everybody to the table from young children to the elderly to the disabled. Everybody has something to contribute and how do we figure out how to make communities that that want to use those gifts and know know what they are and I think that's the lasting impact is that everybody feels like they have a place and that is something that is connected to our traditional communities we didn't come we didn't survive for thousands of years before contact without using all the gifts of the people in our communities we wouldn't have survived so I think it's a very old way of building community and we're just returning to that.